Okay, now it's for my updated video on servitors and servitor creation. What is this? It's another bit of terminology which has been thrown your way as a result of being a part of the magical occult and pagan communities and you think, oh, that's really, really exciting. But what are we talking about? The idea of a servitor is it's some kind of like little energy, like um, slave, which you send out to do a particular task. But what's it made of? All right, does it come from your own mind? Is it being conjured from outside? Because then, it, because if that was the case, then it would be more of an invocation or evocation. Uh, what precisely is it? I mean, even some more modern magical systems, such as the amazing Forty Servants deck, which was created by Tommy Kelly, is based upon the idea of servitor creation or servitor adoration, or indeed using the, the ideas, the concepts, the energy of the various different archetypes to specifically send something out to the outer world. But then you've got to ask yourself, if you are someone who wants to make it work, what the conditions would actually have to be for that to happen? I maintain that it's a question of an expanded state of consciousness brought about by ascension meditation, opening the chakras and doing the body scan meditation. I would say those are the three things you need to do before you do anything specifically related to spirits in general. Whether they are spirits which you've invented or whether they are spirits which you believe already exist, I would recommend that as a start off. It gives you much more sensitivity to your own energy fields, it relaxes you, it brings your mind into... Uh, you know, a, a state whereby you're thinking with one thought, all right? You, you, don't, you don't have all this stuff going on inside your head about the shopping, the washing, the cleaning, the cooking, the meeting this guy, the argument you had with the boss and all that stuff. It's, just, it's gone. I mean, people are interested in making magic mushroom and that sort of stuff. They have this thing called a flow box, which is a box with like lots of tubes in it. So it fl changes the air. So it flows through in, a, in straight parallel lines. So there's less likelihood of contamination in the things that they're growing. So I hear and so I understand, obviously. I don't know anything about that subject. But my, the analogy there is that your mind has to be flowing right. If you've got too much shit going on upstairs, you ain't gonna be able to do nothing because you're not relaxed, focused, tranquil. You're not calm. You haven't got your emotions in check, okay? You don't have the ability to then um, raise focused concentration energy uh, but you also got the benefits from something like the 40 servants of there is a little sigil for each and every single one and some people have simplified these into like rune stones they've made for themselves some of the people have just kept them in the cards some people just draw the symbols there we go that's the one for the saint at the top then we've got and there's the one for the devil there we go and a little and the protester, they've got their own little sigil there. All of these are different characters, different energies, different personalities. You've seen the, I'm sure you've seen the moon one before, haven't you? Of course you have. So the idea is there's 40 cards in the deck. I think they've got other expansion decks out there available. I'm not sure. I haven't really been following it properly. Right. So what is that? It's just a deck of cards, obviously. Just a deck of cards. But when you're doing your energy work and your meditations and all the rest of it, you're attempting to manipulate something which you are assuming is made of real spirit stuff. Namely, the, the aura, the energy field, um, the energy that you're producing. And if you could imagine your servitors like a pro programmed blob of energy which you've taken out of your energy field and you've programmed it with your intention, attention and all that kind of stuff. And then at the explosive parts of your ritual, okay, when... <laughs> you know, you, you, your body sends out that shock wave, all right, that's when you're sending the intention of whatever it is, colored by the words and the ideas and the intention which you're trying to send out. So I think it's worthwhile perceiving these things as blobs of energy. I think it's worthwhile conceptualizing of that. It's an easy mental picture and therefore it's useful. Does it exist as a blob of energy? I don't think we necessarily know. It seems like it does. All right? And when it comes to using that within some of the more basic lower level stuff that we can actually put to the test, such as um, dream telepathy and 
astral projection and psychic reading, it does seem like these things can assist. Let's say, you know, you needed to imprint an, un an un uh, understanding or at least a, a hint of an understanding in somebody, you could probably send that through dream telepathy and deep meditation through a servitor or directly through intention and focused meditative concentration in the manner of a remote spiritual healer. Do they have limitations? Yeah. But do they do something? <clears throat> Seemingly also, yeah. Is this a useful part of magical practice? Well, magical practice itself has to be first and foremost to search for spiritual experience. All right, spiritual or religious experience, because from that you can then start to expand more and learn more with the passage of time. So that's where your focus really should be. But the servitor becomes a form of practical magic to try and send an intention out into the world. Does that make sense? Hope it does. And I'll speak to you all very soon. <laughs>